Hello, peeps. Uh, my name is Mr. Worthen. I'm located in N1. Feel free to come by and say hi. This is the first time you've gotten to hear from me. I'm a little bit weird, so be patient. Um, and let's rock and roll. So you've been solving and graphing inequalities for the last few days. Now we're going to solve and graph compound inequalities. Well, what is that? It's just an inequality that has at least two inequality signs. So now we're putting two of them together, or three of them together. For our purposes, we're going to stick with two for the most part, but down the road you will see more than just two. We have two different types of compound inequalities, an and versus an or, and they're different. And the word and the words and and or mean different things. My wife wants to go to dinner and a movie. I got to do both of those two things. If she wants to go to dinner or a movie, I could do either one. I don't have to make both of them come true. No different with our math. So I'm going to give you a little trick with and and or. It's not 100%. So don't go tell everybody in the world, oh, but Mr. Worthen said it. It works most of the time, but there are some exceptions. Generally, for an and graph, it's going to be dot, dot, and shade in between. Well, why are there two dots? Because there's two inequalities. The key to the and here is that we're shading in between. That's where the two graphs would overlap. This guy would be going to the right, that guy would be going to the left, and I hit each other. Now please notice, when I did the graph of the and, I do not have arrows, because yes, this guy goes that way forever, but he's not overlapping down here, so don't do it. Versus, so that's for ands, versus ors, are generally dot, dot, and I'm not worried about filled in circle versus open. Ors generally go opposite directions of each other. So that's a pretty typical graph of what and versus or will look like. Again, not 100%, but it's close. All right, so we're going to go. This first one, first thing I notice is an and. I've got two separate inequalities. X is greater than 5 and... X is less than 11. So I'm going to start my number line. I always put zero on there just to make sure we know where zero lives. Make sure you're putting your number line in increasing order from left to right. I'm going to start graphing this guy, put a circle on 5. Start graphing this guy, put a circle on 11. Both of those circles are open. Looking at this statement, greater than 5 is above it and less than 11 is below it. This whole area that I've shaded in is where they intersect, where they overlap, so that is the area that is my solution. Any number that is in this shaded area should make both of those statements come true. For the sake of time, I'm not checking it, but feel free and go ahead and check seven. See, seven's right here. See if seven makes both of those true. Switching gears to an or problem now. Still, zero is one of my numbers. My other number is 10. Circle on zero, again open. Circle on 10, again open because both of these do not possess the or equal to. This left-hand side, y is less than zero. Those are all these values down here. Or, y has got to be bigger than 10. And that's all of these guys up here. So again, please notice, I have arrows on or statements. Because anything down here will make him true. Anything up there will make him true. And because it's an or, I don't need them both to be true. Anything that makes one true is a solution. All right, well, this third one, uh, what the heck? There's no, uh, there's no letter or no word. So I'm freaked out. Well, we gotta know, this is an automatic. Anytime you have this interval notation, it's an automatic and statement. And these are actually some of the easiest. I need you to double check, because when, when you start getting feistier with these, we're not gonna give it to you all pretty. But, but this guy starts with the lower number, ends with the higher number, with the variable, variable in between. Always a less than or less than or equal to. Always a less than or less than or equal to. If you will set it up that way every time, these are the easiest to graph because watch. Negative one, 
there's my zero. Again, you don't have to have the zero on there. I just tend to put it in there to make sure we know. So negative one, closed circle because it was or equal to. Closed circle on 10 because it was or equal to. Because it's an and, I believe it's going to be shaded in between. When I go back and double check these, this statement says B has got to be less than or equal to 10. That's below. I like it. This statement, even though it's written backwards, is saying B has got to be greater than or equal to 1. Greater than 1 is there. Not too bad. And versus or. Very important. Got to know it. All right, now let's go apply this to a little bit of real world situation. This first one's talking about chlorine in swimming pools. Why do we have chlorine in swimming pools? We want to kill bacteria, but we can't have too much chlorine because then it will kill us or irritate our eyes. So we have a compound inequality that says at least three parts per million, but no more than, no greater than eight parts per million. Again, parts per million are just the units. If I had a million drops, three of them would need to be, at least three would need to be chlorine. We're not going to worry about that. That's the science piece of it. But just mathematically, I've got to create an, a compound inequality for those two statements. Well, pretty important word right there. That's going to tell me that this is an and. So I'm expecting, in my mind, to see dot, dot, and shade in between. So let's write the inequality first. My chlorine, I'm going to use C, needs to be at least, be careful, at least is one that tricks us a lot, at least is greater than or equal to. You hear the word at least and you think less than, and that's not true. Ma, I need at least 10 bucks. That means 10 or more. So C has got to be greater than or equal to three parts per million, and my chlorine needs to be less than or equal to eight parts per million. It can be eight, but it can't be more than eight. This would be my written compound inequality. Please note that in a multiple choice test, you might see this notation. They mean the exact same thing. So get used to both of those. When I go to graph this, I mark at, there's my zero, there's my three, there's my eight. Closed circle on three, closed circle on eight, greater than three, less than eight. It did exactly what I expected it to. And all of those values that I have shaded in represent possible amounts of chlorine that are acceptable for my pool. Okay, I want you to pause it and try this next one a little bit on your own and then I'll throw the answer up. Okay, so that should be your answer if you've done this correctly. I needed to be below 10,000, so that's less than 10,000. I used A for altitude. Or above 15,000, that's what my graph should look like. A little bit unrealistic here, and I, we didn't give you enough information, but I have a little bit of a problem with that arrow, because can I really go below 10,000 forever? At some point, my plane's gonna hit the ground, and that's not a good thing. Likewise, can I go above 15,000 forever? Well, we got planes that are starting to go into space, so who knows, but yeah, a little bit unrealistic, but for our purposes, that's gonna be enough for us. Okay, so now we're gonna combine everything. We have solved inequalities, we have graphed inequalities, we have graphed compound inequalities, now we're gonna solve and graph compound inequalities. So when I look at this guy over here on the left, X is not by itself like the previous few. So I'm gonna have to get it by itself. When I look at the right side, X is not by itself. I'm going to have to get it by itself. So this is problem. This is two separate solving problems combined with an and or an or. In this case, an or. So, oops, sorry. So I'm going to start solving just the left side. Break this in half. Just focus on one side at a time. To get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 3. x is less than or equal to negative 2. Or I'm going to subtract 7. Leaves me with 2x is greater than or equal to negative 2. x is still not by itself. Got to divide by 2 because that 2 is connected with multiplication. And I end up with x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So my written answer, x is less than or equal to negative 2, 
or x is greater than or equal to negative 1. I can graph that answer as well. Negative 2, negative 1, there's my 0. Closed circle on negative 2, closed circle on negative 1. Again, closed because of the or equal to. Less than or equal to negative 2, that's below. Greater than or equal to neg negative 1, that's above. And there's my graph of that of the solutions to this compound inequality. Next one, same idea, but an and. Still got to get x by itself on this left-hand side. Divide by 3. x is less than negative 1. Uh, I got to get x by itself, and this looks scary. Um, I've got to get rid of the addition and subtraction portion first. That's 6 is what's being added or subtracted. He is a positive 6, so I'm going to have to subtract him. Watch out, you guys will oftentimes add just because you see a minus. But the 6 is positive. I want the 6 to go away, so I'm going to subtract it. I'm left with x is less than negative 2. You should be yelling at me right now, or at your computer right now. Why? Because I forgot to bring down that negative. Ooh, snaps. X is still not by itself. There's a negative. So fix it. Divide by negative 1. Divide by negative 1. Negative and a negative cancel. I've got my X by itself. Booyah, baby. But don't forget, my inequality's got to flip when I divide by a negative. So it's now greater than. And negative 2 divided by negative 1 is positive 2. So my written answer would be X is less than negative 1 and X is greater than 2. So I go to make my graph. Label my number line, and I start to graph. Open circle on 2. Open circle on negative 1. We're talking about less than negative 1, so that's below. We're talking about greater than 2, that's above. Uh, wait a minute, I've got a problem. Houston, we have a problem. This is an and. And in an and statement, I'm looking for where they overlap. This is an and problem that looks like an or problem. Do those graphs overlap anywhere? And the answer is no. So the real answer to this problem, because my and ended up looking like an or, there is no overlapping. All of that work was to find out that there is really no solution to this problem. That's a little freaky and that's scary and that's not normal. I don't want you to think that that's normal, but I wanted to show you one in your notes just in case. When you are done doing a problem, make sure it kind of looks like what you expected. If it didn't, double check yourself. See if you made a mistake somewhere. All right, this last one is a compound inequality that when I'm trying to get x by itself, there are two different inequalities that I got to play with. Well, that, that's fine. If you were trying to get x by itself right here, there's a 3 that I got to get rid of and a 7 that I got to get rid of. Do it just like you would normally. Wouldn't I minus 7 from both sides? The problem is there's more than just two sides. There's three sides. So I'm going to subtract 7 from all three sides. Negative 5, negative 7, negative 12, less than or equal to. 3x is still there. 7 went bye-bye. Less than or equal to. 3. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Don't forget to do it to all 3. And I get x is less than or equal to 1, but greater than or equal to negative 4. And that would be my written answer. My graphical answer, negative 4, 0, 1. Close circle on 1. Close circle on 4. Below 4, but above, sorry, below negative Below 1, but above 4. It is an and because of the interval notation. It looks like what I expected. I'm feeling good. Go ahead and do the next one, and then I'll pop the answer up. And if you did it right, this would be your written answer. That would be your graphical answer. It's been great, kids. Running short on time. Bye-bye.